to you about my education and a little bit about my career. And uh, first of all, I want to thank you guys all for coming and paying attention. Um, my first question for you is exactly what is education? That was the, re the reaction I thought I'd get. <laughs> and I'll be honest, I was in high school before my football coach said, he said, gentlemen, I'm an educator. And what educators do is they change behavior. So if you think about what your teachers are doing, you're changing, they're changing your behavior to make you into adults. That's an awesome responsibility. It's an awesome job. So it's, it's remember what, the, what education does and why is it important? Because it allows you in the future to change what you do, change how you do it, and become something different. And more importantly than that, no matter where you go, no matter where you'll be, you will think back to this school. You will think back to the things you learn here and you learn if you will you will always take it with you. Nobody can take away that education from you. The bigger deal is it allows you to adapt, it allows you to change, because you know what's been happening in this economy? We have this thing called computers and all the everything's changing constantly, but it's that college degree that allows you somebody to go, oh, you got a college degree. I, we know it's new technology, you can learn it. Okay, that's important stuff to do, and you can, you're, from here on out, whenever you finish school, you're going to constantly be changing and learning. You'll always be, if you're doing it right, if you're doing life right, you're always going to be learning. When we play football, we say every level the game changes. You, the game you play in junior high is one, is one deal, and you can get away with a lot of things with just on athleticism. You get to the next level, you get, you got to use your smarts, and then you get to, it takes athleticism and skill and some other things, and, and it, the game constantly is changing. Now, Ms. O'Connell says you guys make daily goals. How many of you guys have daily goals? Awesome. That is absolutely awesome. When I was 15, it was the first time I ever made goals in my life. And I, you know, I had a guy come speak to us and said, you ought to make a, a hundred goals. And these were lifelong goals, and you want to, now they have a, a movie out called The Bucket List and things you want to do with, do with the rest of your life. I made that when I was 15 years old. My father was in the Navy. He always talked about, he said, son, if you ever get a chance, you ought to go to Hawaii. It's the closest thing to heaven on this planet. <laughs> and so that was one of my goals. I want to go to Hawaii. And he, he had taken, when he was on leave, he had taken a trip to the Rocky Mountains. He said, son, that is one of the coolest places you ever want to see. So if you ever get a chance, you ought to go to the Rocky Mountains. I said, okay. I put that on my list. I put, and when I was in, in, when I was 15, I thought I was going to be a basketball player. Okay, and I said I want to play pro ball. I didn't realize pro ball also included the NFL. <laughs> um, and I, I also had some 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 little goals like get an A in, in biology and get straight A's in, in a semester and things like that. Those are important. Those are things that help you. And uh, the point is, I set those goals. And what happens when you set goals? You got to do new things. You got to get out there and try something different and do things a different way. And you know what that you know the problem with that is, you're generally not very good, are you? Right? When you do something new, aren't you aren't you really pretty bad? When how many of you guys have younger brothers and sisters? Did you ever watch them learn to walk? <laughs> Did they fall down a lot? Yes, absolutely. And my my point is, I want you to remember this. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing poorly. What do I mean by that? If you're, if you're doing your math and you're trying to figure out do long hand and do all this, don't you have a scratch pad? That's what that's what life is about. You're gonna do you're gonna learn new skills, you're gonna be bad. That's just the way life is. Okay, you can't start at the top. So repeat after me. If it's worth doing. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing, it's worth doing poorly. 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 Exactly. Because why? You're going to get better. Because that's the way we are. We're humans. We get better. When I first played football, I played, my first football game was in seventh grade. And I was playing tight end and I blocked my guy and I, 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 I got position on him and he ran around and took off. And a guy from the backside. He saw me just standing there, and he leveled me. And uh, I, I got mad. 
I got real mad, so I chased him down. And good news is the running back reversed field, and I got a second shot at that guy. Just as he turned around, I got him. And that's one of the lessons you got to learn from football is when bad things happen, and bad things are going to happen to you. I, you we, don't, we don't control that, but bad things are going to happen. You have a choice. You can get bitter, or you can get better. And when you choose to get better, things get better. Does that make sense? So repeat after me. When bad things happen, when bad things happen, you can get bitter. You can get bitter. Or you can get better. better. Thank you. And it's and I hope you'll make that choice. But it's one of those deals. If you you know we all we have bad things happen to us every day, and you can choose. You can get bitter. You can get better. When I was a sophomore in high school, my dad got laid off from Ford. And it's, he, he came to my brother and I, he said, Here, here's the deal, boys. College is on you. If you want, I want you to go to college, I hope you can make it. But you gotta pay for it out of your own pocket. Now my brother chose to go in the Navy. My brother ended up going in the Navy and did, got his degree paid for by the United States government, which is not a bad deal. All I knew, I was a sophomore in high school, and all I knew is I had an uncle who had gone to West Point. And I knew the government paid for his education. So I walked into my guidance counselor and I said, what do I need to do to get into West Point? And that was during, right, right after the Vietnam War, and she kind of looked at me and said, wow, what are you talking about? Have you, have you lost your mind? And I said, well, I want, I'm, I want the government to pay for my college. And she said, okay. And the football coach happened to walk by. And he said, son, if I was your size and I was as big and strong as you are, I would play football and get a football scholarship. And I thought about that when I went home because I wasn't playing football at the time, I was playing basketball. And long, long and the short of it is he changed my life because he opened a door that I didn't know was there. And I came back to him and I said, coach, tell me exactly what I have to do. And he said, it's going to be hard work. You're going to be in a weight room a lot. You're going to work hard. You know, you're going to do this. you got to run, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. And you know what? He was right. I got a scholarship. Now, we would work hard. We would lift weights at 530 in the morning. We would be at the gym at 530 in the morning, which is two hours ago. <laughs> okay? It was early. It was hard. And then the afternoons, we'd go run. We'd do run sprints and things like that. My brother, who I mentioned, went in the Navy. My brother was a little bit smaller than I was, but he was, and he was a much better runner. We'd run together, and we, all, we'd go, and, and uh, I always laughed about it, because we, we had this little drill. And he'd look at me, and he'd go, how you doing, big man? I'd say, I'm doing good. And we'd, and we'd keep running, he'd, he'd look at me, and he'd go, how you doing, big guy? And I finally, at some point, I'd be like, I'm dying. I am just dying. He'd go, okay, we'll run this next telephone pole. So we run to the next telephone pole and he go, hey, how you doing? And I'd say, you know, I, I can make it another telephone pole. So we just make it one more telephone pole and then one more telephone pole and one more telephone pole. And then it, well, pretty soon all of a sudden we're thinking, you know, we're three telephone poles from being two miles. I, I can make three telephone poles. So here's the lesson I want you to learn. I want you to repeat after me. Always quit. Always quit. At the next telephone pole. At the next telephone pole. Now, I know in Odessa, not every neighborhood's got a telephone pole, so you may have to be at the next city block or the next telephone pole, or but but always have something where you're going to, I'm going to, because your brain kind of settles down when you say, oh, we're going to quit. Because we want to procrastinate, right? When, you, when your mom says, I want you to take out the trash, you go, got it, mom, right? I'll get in a few minutes. What are you doing? You're procrastinating. Use your procrastination to help you. Okay? I'll, I'll quit in a minute. I'll quit in the, tele the next telephone pole. And I promise you, when I was, my brother went through basic underwater demolition school in the Navy, and I asked him, how in the world did you get through that? Nine months of absolute torture. And he said, I always quit at the next telephone pole. Remember that. Now, 
I'll tell you one other story about that. My junior year, I was playing football. Coach, you promised me all this stuff, but I really wasn't playing. I wasn't getting in the game. So one day I said, you know, basketball's starting up. I'm missing playing time. I'm going to go. I'm going to quit. And one of my buddies said, well, at least finish the game. You know, we got a game on Friday. At least finish that game. So, all right. So I'll, I'll quit after the game on Friday. Guess what happened to the starter? He was, he was being recruited by Michigan State. Michigan State came in to the coach and said, you know, that kid is a heck of a ball player. And he said, well, there's only one problem. My starter got hurt in the first half. The guy you're looking at is a junior, and that was me. He said, that kid can play. And he said, well, and from then on, I, I didn't come off the field. So quit on a Friday, quit at the next telephone poll, okay? <laughs> Um, then all of a sudden people wanted me to go to college. It's a really cool place. A guy named Don Murray showed up. He said, son, I'm from the University of Wyoming. And I, and I looked at my head coach and I said, where? In, I was in Detroit, Michigan. I said, where on earth is the University of Wyoming? He said, well, it's a little bit past Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's 900 miles past Chicago. <laughs> But it, was, but it was out there, and the coach came up and he said, look, he said, uh, we're in the Rocky Mountains. Our, our, our stadium is a half a mile above Mile High Stadium. We're at 7,200 feet. We play football. Next four years, we're going to play FOI four times. And I said, why? He said, yes, sir. And I went, oh, oh, I remember those goals I wrote when I was 15 years old. Rocky Mountains, Hawaii. He said, by the way, we're going to play at Las Vegas. I was like, ooh, now we're talking. And he said, we're going to play at San Diego. We're going to play at Miami and at Washington. I said, coach, I'm in. Tell me where, tell me where we need to go. The most important thing about all that, they were the only school that wanted me all the time. They never wavered. And that's one rule I want you to remember. Now, everybody repeat. Go where you're celebrated. Go where you're celebrated. Do not go where you're tolerated. Do not go where you're tolerated. It's vital. I promise you, if you go, if you work with people who love to work with you, you will be a better, you will perform better, you'll get better results, you'll do better things. Long story short, our uh, we, <laughs> the coach that wanted me so bad, he got fired two years later. So we had a new coach came in and he, he cleaned house. I was one of the guys that stuck around. And all of a sudden he went, and then he went to Auburn. His name was Pat Dye. He decided he was, he, his wife didn't like the state of Wyoming. She didn't like snow. He, uh, he took off and all of a sudden we didn't have a head coach. And our strength coach would take us out running. And he would take the whole half the team would be in the weight room. The other half the team would be running. Just like you guys are, rows and columns. And we'd be running along, and one of the guys made a comment while we were running. He said, you know, he goes, I got 75 hours of here. And we're running along, and one of the guys said, how many hours do you need to graduate? And I promise you, it took a long time for somebody to answer that question. <laughs> the issue was, finally somebody said, I think around 120 you graduate. And you know the amazing thing about that story? We had the highest graduation percentage of any NCAA institution. I, I firmly believe it was that moment because every one of us finished that run going, holy cow, I only need a year, like one more year because we had lost sight of the long-term goal. We had forgotten that we were there to get a degree, but all of a sudden somebody reminded me, I got 75 hours. We're getting close to graduating. So we had the high school, we tied with Notre Dame and University of Virginia, which are really, really good schools. And uh, we, uh, we had the greatest, you know, the highest graduation percentage of our freshmen that year um, of, any, uh, of, the, of the NCAA institutions. There's a team I had never heard of. Now we were the Wyoming Cowboys. Have you guys ever heard of the Dallas Cowboys? Yeah. <laughs> I, I had never, oh, you, wait, you've heard of them? I had never heard of them. I grew up a Detroit Lions fan. <laughs> yeah, you've never heard of them, I guarantee you that. <laughs> the, uh, anyway, that, again, going back to going where you're celebrated, don't go where you're tolerated. They showed up the day before the draft. There was a guy who came in and took me out to dinner and said, look, if you don't get drafted, I want you, uh, really would like to play for the Dallas Cowboys. 
And I thought, hmm, okay. I said, well, you know, the, what's it pay? And he told me, and I was kind of like, hmm, now we're talking. So uh, all of a sudden, the, the, the draft came, and I was, I was at the very tail end. There, there was some, I got some calls from teams saying, hey, we want you to play, blah, blah, blah. All of a sudden, I didn't get drafted. And then guess what? There's that guy, and he said, we want you to come on the team. Well, guess what? I signed with the Dallas Cowboys. My locker was in, the next to a guy named Bill Bates. Have you ever heard of Bill Bates? You guys, you guys are all too young. <laughs> You've heard of him. <laughs> Bill, Bill Bates is a great man, great guy. Mark Tuane was, was uh, one of the rookies with me. Jim Jeffco was with me, and 120 others. And that brings me to my next point. How many of you got guys, all you sixth graders, how many of you guys want to play football in college? Okay. Let me give you some statistics. Out of, out of 100 high school players, two of them will go on and play college. Okay? Now that's of the kids who get to high school and actually get a, put on a Permian helmet or an OHS helmet, two out of 100. And of those two out of 100 that go to college and play, you got two of them out of 100 will go play in the NFL. And you know how long the average career is in the NFL? Three years. And most of the salaries in the NFL are right close to the NFL minimum. I mean, which is really, it's a lot of money, but it, it's, if it goes really fast, it's not that much money. That's why the joke is amongst the players, NFL stands for not for long. <laughs> All right, remember that. NFL stands for not for long. So, what's the rule there? Yeah, not for long. <laughs> you're, you're exactly right. Guys, get your education. There are more brain surgeons that graduate every year than are, than are NFL players. You got a better chance going to school, you got a better chance getting a degree, you got a better chance being a doctor. There's something like 10,000 doctors that come, come out of medical school every year. Guess what, there's nowhere near that many NFL players. And doctors get to make that money for 40 years. The other issue is, it's been 31 years since I've locked them in. Every day I use my English. I write emails, I talk to customers. I use my English skills a lot. I use my math skills a lot. I use my analysis, my leadership skills that I learned in, in, in high school and college. Those are skills you learn in college. Right now, you gotta learn the basics and all that good stuff, but I promise you, you're gonna be using the skills you learn right here a lot longer than you, 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 you will in the NFL. I guarantee you. Last thing is, oh, not the last thing. The other thing is, after I got, I, after I got done with the NFL, I came back, and you know what they did at, at Wyoming? They gave my number away. Somebody else was wearing my number, and that hurt. And you know what, you stop and think about it, there's only 100 numbers. They, even, if, even the teams that retire NFL players, at some point they had to go back, well, we just kind of unretired the number, because there's only 100. They've got to do something. The point is, and I want you to understand this, I, I thought I loved the game, and I, you know, listen to me, repeat after me. Don't love anything, anything that can't love you back. That can't love you back. So what does that mean? Love your mom, love your dad, love your sisters, love your brothers, love what the game makes you. Love the discipline that it teaches you. Love the hard work, love the, 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 the feeling of accomplishment, love the camaraderie that the game gives you, but don't love the game. Believe me, hold, get, get called for holding four times in a game, the game doesn't love you. <laughs> Trust me on that one. You, your career will be very short. Because you'll find real quick that they don't love you very much. But your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother, they'll love you. The last thing, when I was a kid, my mom, I, you know, again, as I told you, I grew up in Detroit, Michigan. And in Detroit, when it snows, it'll, it'll snow. We'll get a foot of snow in, in, in about four hours. 
we had a retired lady live next door to us, and she, she my mom would always say, go, sh go shovel her driveway. And I'd whine and I'd snivel and all oh, mom, and she would get mad and I'd finally say, okay, I'll go shovel her driveway. And what I found, after I got away from the world revolves around Dan Burleson, is when I did something nice for Mrs. Masterson, and by the way, she she really, really appreciated it. I don't know if you've ever been working hard and sweating in 20 degree weather, pushing a, 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 a snow shovel, and she comes out with chocolate chip cookies that just came out of the oven. Brother, you have not lived. <laughs> but she appreciated it. And more to the point was, I, I got something out of the hard work and she, quite frankly, really, really, really appreciated me for doing that. And all of a sudden, the world didn't revolve around me. And this, my self-esteem went up as a result. So if you want to you feel good about yourself, do good for somebody else. So remember this saying. All right, repeat after me. What I gave. What I gave. I have. I have. What I didn't give. What I didn't give. I've lost forever. I've lost forever. You like that? What I gave, I have. What I didn't give, I've lost forever. My son graduated from the United States Air Force Academy. If you look on the inside of his graduation ring, they get to put an inscription. One of my proudest moments is he put that inscription on the inside of his ring. More importantly, I think when we when we die and go to heaven, I think one of the worst punishments God's going to give us is he's going to show us all the things he was willing to give us if we'd have been willing to give to, to others. And my point is, if it doesn't cost you anything, give it away. Give something to somebody else. Do something nice to something to somebody else. What was your what was your quote? You guys had something more. Oh, you had you had, you had a really good really good phrase on that, but it was on your, but do do good things for other people because you know why you'll feel good about yourselves. So I'm going to summarize real quick. Have goals, right? Everybody writes goals, daily goals. Write your put your hand up. Write more. Make a hundred goals. All right. If it's worth doing. Repeat after me. If it's worth doing. If it's worth doing. It's worth doing. Poorly. 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 Right? Because if, if you're learning a new skill, you're going to be bad. Okay? When bad things happen. When bad things happen. You can get bitter. You can get bitter. Or you can get. <laughs> better. Get better. <clears throat> and when do we quit? At the next telephone pole, absolutely. And where do we go? We go where we're celebrated not. and not where we're tolerated. Amen. What do we do with our education? Finish it. Now, let me remind you one thing about your education finish. The horse that's in first place in the horse races. That doesn't finish, what place does he take? Last. Even though he's first at the, at the turn, what place is he, does he get? He's dead last. Finish your education. Because all the benefits come at the finish line, right? Absolutely. And don't love anything that doesn't love you back. And the last one, and to me the most important, what I gave, I have. What I didn't give, I've lost forever. Guys, you've been a great audience. I want to thank you for your time. You guys are terrific.